We are so excited to be speaking with you today. My name is Connie, and I lead design for a few different teams at Stripe. And this is my work friend, Taylor. Hi, everyone. My name is Taylor. I'm a product designer at Stripe, and I work on the dashboard and messaging experiences. Awesome. Thanks, Taylor. And she'll be back with you shortly with a fascinating case study. But first, I'm going to give you all an overview on Stripe. We're also joined by a few Stripes in the audience, Stripes is what we call ourselves, in the, in the main uh, chat today. So feel free to ask any questions about what we share. We'll try to respond. Also, for reference, any data that we show in screenshots is completely fake. All right, this website, familiar to some of you, this is what most people imagine when they think of Stripe. We build payments infrastructure. What does that all mean? And while we do have a beautiful site and have become quite known for our fun gradients, we do so much more. This is our dashboard. It's the actual heart and soul of our product, but most people don't see this unless they're actually a merchant, which is what we call our users. We design everything from complex tasks like onboarding and fraudulent charge reviews to exact wording and structure of navigational labels. We make incredibly challenging processes as easy as possible for businesses and customers around the world. Although most of our customers are merchants, we also have consumer facing products as well, like our checkout experience, which some of you may have even used before. We also build products that fight against climate change by enabling our merchants to fund carbon removal projects. We step into the analog world as well. We believe that access to information is the best way to move ideas and perhaps the world forward. For this purpose, we actually design and print books through Stripe Press publishing content about economic um, and technological advancement. Some are completely new material, some bring out of print books back into the world, and all contain what we call what we call ideas for progress. We also work on Increment, our quarterly print and digital magazine for developers that explores the state of the tech industry, one issue at a time, covering topics like reliability, open source, security, and teams. We even recently helped produce a film, a documentary on the incredible Stuart Brand, creator of the Whole Earth Catalog and founder of the modern environmental movement. So who's behind all of this? Here we are in an actual office. It's been a while, but uh, they do exist. Um, uh, they, they uh, well, we're not in them anymore, just to clarify. And while uh, we aren't able to be there together in person, we do fun things like draw self-portraits with our non-dominant hands. These are members of the design team and their actual portraits. So hello, friends. Today, I'd like to share with you four ideas that are important to Stripe Design. These are not the only ideas that are important to us, just ones that will fit into our talk today. The first idea, thinking in really long time scales. Hmm, what does this mean? This is a pace layering diagram created by Stuart Brand, who I just mentioned earlier. He proposed six different levels of pace in the working structure of a robust and adaptable civilization. Each layer here from bottom to top moves at a different speed. Top is fastest, bottom is slower. In time scales, nature is eons, culture, millennia, governance in centuries, infrastructure in decades, commerce in years, and fashion, well, that's just, it's just squiggles. Stripe operates at the infrastructure level, meaning we like to think in decades. As a fun example, Patrick, our CEO, has said that he likes to make decisions on 10-year timeframes. For instance, if he's debating if he should go for a run or take a nap, the Patrick 10 years from now wouldn't have cared if he took a nap, but would have been glad he went for a run. So he goes for a run. This is also why it's so important for us to work on something like fighting climate change, we view this as one of the greatest threats to the world and its inhabitants in the upcoming decades. This really long time horizon also means that the types of designers who work here have more of a city planner mentality. We're not thinking about how we build uh, individual buildings or cars, but we're thinking about questions like how wide should the streets be? Where and how should traffic flow? What connects to what? How do we prepare for fires and disasters? And if we build all that correctly, then structures, businesses in our case, can grow organically and safely on top of it. How do we move with urgency and focus while also building for the year 2030? We have to have incredibly strong foundations and systems. We don't design features independently. We take into account how it works as part of the whole dashboard system. 
always consider, um, always design a thing by considering it in its next larger context. A chair in a room, room in a house, house in an environment, environment in a city plan. Spoken, of course, by an architect. Solid foundations means things like making sure we build products and platforms that are fast and accessible. It means we invest in the creation of systems that scale rather than short-sighted fixes. When we take the time to build solid design systems, it results in higher quality products for our users. Here, you can see our color system tables have built-in contrast and accessibility ratings, as well as graphs that show which color bands exist in the visible color space. It also means that our component library is filled with fun and unique things like this bank statement preview. This one is even interactive. I actually just typed in hello config right there. Prioritizing rigor and quality. One of the things that sets Stripe apart is our ability to execute at an incredibly high level of detail, obsessing over all the little moments that can make the experience of engaging with Stripe surprisingly great. One way we do this is by doing things nobody expects us to. For instance, when a developer is digging through our API documentation to learn about how something works at Stripe, there's a pretty high chance that they're actually logged in. So we show their real API key right here. Sure, it's a little harder to build it this way, but it's the sort of thing that developers love us for. It signals that there's a human being who thought about what they need in that moment and provided it for them. Details matter, especially because of the business we're in. A user interface that is perfectly polished and works exactly as you'd expect is critical to earning and keeping the trust of our customers. Inspiring confidence. This is the last point I'll highlight today. Stripe is working on really complicated stuff. It's our duty to ensure that we're making things as straightforward as possible. This doesn't mean dumbing things down or over oversimplifying. We actually talk up to our audience. We amplify their everyday efforts and respect their expertise. We are the primary and often only source of revenue for most of our customers. And that means a lot of actions they try to take can be really scary. If something goes wrong, there can be serious consequences. We try to minimize fear as often as possible. This screen shows how someone uh, shows the first time someone tries to file a dispute, which is a non-fun thing that merchants have to do a lot. We added helpful tips along the way, informing you of what's about to happen, kind of like a concierge. We guide users towards the specific solutions and try to lighten their cognitive load so they can get their work done. This is a part of Stripe from 10 years ago, a part of stripe.com, our main website. And I love this example because it's still relevant and it's a great example of thinking that lasts for a decade. This may not look like much design wise, but the magical part was that this was real code on the left that anyone could copy and run and send a payment to Stripe. That was amazing because it used to take a team multiple weeks to get a payment system set up. And now it was less than 10 lines of code. We knew our audience, which was mostly developers at the time, and we built something to speak to them and make them feel powerful. In more recent times, we created a checkout demo to show merchants what the experience would actually be like for their, uh, for their customers. Oh, can we, can we go back a slide? Well, I'll, I'll just I'll visualize a checkout demo uh, where we have merchants actually testing uh, credit card numbers. So instead of making merchants hunt for these numbers and look around and all over you know, different pages, we put a little tray with all of the credit card numbers that pass, that fail, whatever edge cases we could think of right there. By focusing on such details, we show that we care and that engenders trust with our users. We also do everything possible to ensure that our users are set up for success. In summary, here are the four ideas that, oh, um, I think we lost the slides, but I'll, I'll keep talking one second. Uh, to summarize the four ideas that I, just, that I just shared, these are things that we think about in our day-to-day -day work when we create designs at Stripe. We think in really long time scales. We lay strong foundations so that our work 
can last. We prioritize rigor and quality. We inspire confidence and trust in our users. Well, we're having a little a little technical moment for uh, for getting our slides ready. But when we when we get to that, uh, we'll uh, I'll hand this part over to Taylor, who will actually walk us through a real uh, real example of our of our work that highlights some of these four ideas. And hi, Taylor, just in time. Good to see you again. And uh, I'll let you take it over. Thanks, Connie. Sorry about that, everyone. We're having a little bit of technical difficulties with the slides. Uh, so the principles that Connie mentioned, in particular, thinking in long time scales and laying strong foundations are heavily prevalent in the case study I'm going to walk us through. In this project, designers on our dashboard team realized that the card-based UI we had for the last several years was no longer serving the needs of the dashboard. We needed to create a new structure that would support our growing user base and product suite something that could flex and grow with us over the years. Before I dive into the details of this project, I want to do two things. First, I'd like to share up front our learnings from this project. Then I'll give some quick background on the Stripe dashboard, its users, and some common dashboard workflows. This project was a huge undertaking, and we learned a lot over the course of the work. I wanted to share these takeaways up front so you could see how they manifested throughout the project. The first learning was that designers should be leaning on their strengths to define strategy. A visual artifact creates more clarity across a group than words alone. And three, when designers step out of their traditional roles, it leads to impactful change. Stripe started as a company to help developers and founders quickly and easily accept payments for their online startups. In the last 10 years, Stripe has grown dramatically to accommodate businesses of all sizes, ranging from startups to enterprise-sized companies. With this growth has come an expansion in users. While developers and founders still remain one of the key user groups of Stripe, you can also find support specialists, fraud analysts, accountants, financial analysts, CFOs, bookkeepers, operations, and honestly, a couple more than that. Due to this increase in users, the jobs to be done in Dashboard has risen dramatically. When Stripe first started out, the core Dashboard workflows revolved around charging a customer, issuing a refund, and making your Stripe integration was working properly. Now, we have tons of workflows that a user can be expected to do, given their role, business size, and the Stripe products they're using. The list here is just scratching the surface. All right, now for that project I mentioned. As Stripe's user base and product suite grew, we needed to evolve the dashboard to fit the changing needs. However, we were running into some issues. The Stripe dashboard was comprised entirely of cards. Every single page had full width cards stacked one on top of the other all the way down the page. Every piece of content in this main area was in a card, from tabs to plain text to banners and forms. And due to a technical constraint with the way shadows were originally built in, a designer couldn't implement a layout with multiple cards in a row. For example, like two stacked right next to each other wasn't possible. This led to a really homogenous UI and a lot of problems. For starters, there was really poor information hierarchy. As you can see in this example, there are two cards at the top of the page with page controls. Um, but because these were in two independent standalone cards, it wasn't clear to users that taking an action up top here affected the content below. Another issue we experienced were these really long, repetitive pages. Uh, so in this example, uh, on the customer page, we lovingly refer to it as a CVS receipt because it just goes on and on and on and on. And so if you're a user trying to get down to this logs card here at the bottom, you're having to go past a lot of information that's not useful to you. So we were actually adding extra time and burden onto our users when they were trying to do their everyday workflows. And then lastly, in an effort to create a less than ideal experience with the card layout, designers started turning to a Band-Aid component we created, a full page modal which contained no cards, allowing a designer to create any layout they wanted. While this unblocked designers on their current projects, it was treating the symptom, not the underlying cause. We knew we needed a better long-term solution. So in addition to these UI issues, we also faced some challenges organizationally. In the beginning, we had trouble convincing cross-functional partners that this was worth prioritizing. The issues with cards were not something we'd heard directly from users. At Stripe, we love hearing what our users have to say and what they tell us often drives our roadmap. 
However, in this case, we'd hear things like, I can't find X on the page, or this page looks too similar, and it's difficult for me to understand where I am in the dashboard. These issues could be tackled on their own, but as designers, we saw them bubbling up as a larger card issue. But because we hadn't heard any specific asks about removing cards, it made it hard to tough. It made it tough to prioritize this work over the other asks we had. Additionally, we'd pitch this work to our partners in meetings through conversations and docs. But on the surface, this appeared to be a visual update to them. Our pitch wasn't properly illustrating the vision we had in our collective heads and the problems that we would be solving. So this left us at a fork in the road. Should we drop the idea due to lack of traction or should we double down, continue to keep our users front of mind and start exploring this work? We decided to do the latter. So how did we actually go about deciding to <laughs> completely redo our entire dashboard? Uh, well, we started off by putting a team together. Across the dashboard org, we had seven designers on various teams. All of us were actually working on full-time projects at the time and could only dedicate a few hours a week to this work. Due to this time constraint, we decided to set weekly design sprints with each sprint centered around a prompt. We opted to start broad so as to generate some blue sky ideas and not limit our creativity when it came to the future form of the dashboard. Our very first prompt was, if the dashboard didn't have cards, what would it look like? With that, each of us dove in and the first round of results were really interesting. Even though we all had the exact same prompt, each person's designs came out so differently. So in this example here, you can see that the designer went for a really bold, strong color, uh, even bringing in some of like the gradient usage of stripe.com into the navigation, and then started to use these really strong rules to help divide up the content on the page and, and show the different content relationships. Uh, designer, the other designer, for example, too, actually went the complete opposite direction with the navigation and explored a collapsible nav so that there was more space uh, to play with in the main content area, allowing them to play up things like typography, data viz, and column count. And in this example, with no cards, we actually had more possibilities for responsive layouts. So we played around with this contextual panel that could come in and out uh, with content changing depending on which page you were on. And lastly, we were able to explore color a lot more. Uh, previously, the dashboard had this sort of like middle toned gray background. And because of that, um, we didn't really need like a light mode or a dark mode and there wasn't a lot we could do with color. So it was exciting to start playing around uh, with this. So we continued this process of prompt design sprint crit for about three months, getting more narrow and more specific with the prompts each week. Some prompts nudged us to look at translating an existing card-based component to a cardless one. Others had us double down an idea someone showed, applying it to multiple surfaces across the dashboard. And sometimes we'd take a step back and go broad again, if we started to rabbit hole too much. We even did a hackathon day in the middle of this process just to dedicate like a full day to be able to work on this because throughout this whole process, we were all dedicated to other full-time work. Overall, this process generated hundreds of concepts. I actually think 150 is, is lowballing it. Um, and it was really great because we had so many explorations. And, and while we didn't end up using all of them, we now have so many ideas in our back pocket. So after a few months passed, we started to get to a place where we had a shared vision. We felt that we could start shopping around to cross-functional partners, other product teams, and eventually Stripe leadership. This was the rallying North Star prototype, which showcases through visuals what we envisioned the dashboard of the future to look like. While we invited cross-functional partners to our crits and got feedback from them throughout the prompt process, seeing the North Star helped them and other stakeholders better understand the problems we were trying to solve, the vision we had, and how we were going to marry those two things to make the dashboard better for users. So now that we had buy-in and engineers to help, how did we actually take this idea and make it reality? Uh, we started by taking two of those seven designers and transitioning them on to work on this project full time. Uh, we, while we had established a really broad vision, it was their job to ground it closer to reality and find a way to update the 100 plus pages in the dashboard in a quick and effective way. Stripe moves very quickly and we knew we needed to get this work done to A, unblock upcoming projects that we knew needed cardless in order to work in the dashboard, and B, because we couldn't expect product teams to pause while we did this update. So. Using data, the team was able to determine the top 10 most used pages in the dashboard. They decided to focus their efforts here first. The designers looked over each page 
tweaking typography, spacing, color usage, and in some cases, making large layout adjustments to better suit the cardless world. In this mix of pages, we had repeated and unique surfaces. Home, for example, was a unique surface. It's the page users see as soon as they log into the dashboard, and it only appears once. On the other hand, we had both the payments list view and the payments detail view in the top 10 list. While these were specific instances, list views and detail views make up about 40 total pages within the dashboard. So redesigning these two instances gave us extra bang for our buck as we could now apply those designs across the 40 other use cases. However, or I guess more unfortunately, all these pages combined only made up about half of the dashboard. We didn't want users to see two completely different UI experiences. So in an effort to not have to overturn every rock for this first ship, the designers came up with a stepping stone between the card-based UI and the cardless UI. This midway point removed the heavy card shadows, swapped the dashboard background to white, and upped the card heading typography. We called this iteration flat UI. These small CSS changes meant we could quickly change all the pages in dashboard with minimum effort. When we tested with users, most didn't notice the difference between the flat and cardless UI. This meant that in one ship, we could make a sweeping effect, then quickly follow up to update the remaining flat UI pages to cardless. So what were the outcomes of this project? Like, What did the final product look like? So in the span of a month and a half, the team transformed the entire dashboard. The home page now had clear section titles and without the noise of the dashboard background and the shadows and the border radiuses, there was more room for the graphs and charts to be on full display. List views now had clear page titles and tabs clearly grounded on the tables they affected. And detail pages no longer had card after card after card. Users could instead focus on the content and not the extraneous details. The culmination of this work led to a lot of positive chatter on Twitter not only had it made the dashboard easier to use, but users appreciated the fresh approach of the new aesthetic. Internally, we also saw success. Do you remember this like crazy long CVS receipt page I showed earlier? Well, the team that owned that page was able to transform it with the new cardless UI. They created a sticky left rail that contained key information about a customer, like their email or their total lifetime volume with that business. And then any object connected to that customer, like subscriptions or recent payments, could go on the right. There were no more crazy long pages and no more intensive scrolling for users. So as I mentioned earlier, there are a few key takeaways from this project. One, designers should be leaning into their strengths to define strategy. Uh, for the longest time at Stripe, designers were tr trying to meet the company where they were at. Uh, Stripe has a really strong docs culture where we write everything down. Um, and while it was good for us to like try writing and try this practice, we found that it wasn't working for us. And that when we turn to our own strengths, user experience, championing the user, beautiful visuals and storytelling, that we were much better uh, adapt at being able to share our ideas and our plans for the future for the dashboard. Uh, there are two really kind of cliche statements here, but show don't tell and uh, image is worth a thousand words. Um, we found that, you know, if you go into a meeting with a 25 page document, you know, a, everybody in that meeting, you could come out and ask them, like, what was the proposal in this document saying? And every single person would say something a little bit different. But when you have an image that you show, or in this case, a North Star prototype, there's no contesting what the vision is. The vision is just already there. And this we found has led to a lot tighter alignment faster than just aligning around a document. And then lastly, when designers step out of their traditional roles, it leads to impactful change. This one is twofold. Um, kind of going back to what Connie was saying earlier about Stripe being payments infrastructure, but also exploring things like books and magazines and climate initiatives. And Stripe wouldn't be where it was today and be as successful as it was today if we didn't kind of diversify our portfolio a little bit. And I think the same goes for the designers on this project. At times, they had to play strategist, product manager, and even data scientist to get this idea up and running and really champion it um, across the organization. Um, and if they hadn't done that, it wouldn't have, this project likely wouldn't have happened. Um, and then like the second part of this learning is that from 
kind of shifting the way we did design, like not using a brief and just kind of starting with design first and this long tail of explorations, we were actually able to change the culture of how we design at Stripe. Uh, we're now seeing a lot of other designers not on the dashboard team start to create North Stars and share those with their team. And in fact, present these ideas to their team as, as the direction that product should be going. Uh, and we're also just seeing more exploration happen and with design first before there's a brief with a, a solution outlined. So that's a wrap on this case study. Uh, if you're interested in this project or any other work we showed here today, Stripe is hiring. Uh, the design team is currently looking for product designers, managers, researchers, and brand and comms designers. So if you're interested, please, please apply at stripe.com slash jobs. And Connie is now back. Uh, this slide is here just to say that we uh, are going to be checking Twitter for the next few hours, answering any questions that you might have about this talk, Stripe, or design at Stripe. So please feel free to reach out. We're going to do our best. Connie and I are not big Twitter people, but uh, we will try to answer as many questions as we can <laughs> in the next few hours. Um, That's awesome. But, yeah. Um, and on behalf of Connie and I, like, thank you all so much for coming to our talk. We really enjoyed getting to give you a little peek into design at Stripe. Thank you so much, Taylor, for walking us through that awesome case study. And thank you all um, to all of you for listening to us, being in the audience, and learning a bit with us today. Uh, we really hope you enjoy the rest of your time at Config, and may you find some ideas that inspire you.